Now, as you might be noticing with human rights as we continue these videos and continue this course, there are lots of different ways of describing and breaking them up and sort of understanding them as a system. The most common way these days, or one of the most common ways, is to break them into dimensions, which is this creation that comes from the 70s by this guy whose name is not Carol, but Karel Vashek. He is a Czech guy who works in human rights in Europe, and he divides them into these three dimensions. He calls them generations, but a lot of people have taken his idea and sort of run with it. And what a lot of people call them now are dimensions, because dimensions sort of imply this, this sort of thing about human rights is that they build on each other. They work together as a group, not that they replace old ideas in a way. And if you want to remember what these dimensions look like, you need to think of the French Revolution. Why would you do that? Well, the French Revolution had the motto of liberty, equality, and fraternity. And this is a simple way of remembering the three dimensions because the first dimension is actually civil and political rights. The second dimension, these are economic, social, and cultural. So they have to do with equality. And the third dimension, they are simply called collective rights. So what does each of these mean? Well, let's take a look at civil and political rights. These are negative rights. And if you remember from the timeline, these are kind of the rights that happened between the Magna Carta, the Magna C, and the Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You see them throughout history, and they are really having to do with your participation in society. They have to do with your rights as an individual in society. So we're talking about things like voting, even very basic things like ownership, whether you're able to own things in a society, things like speech, and even things like religion. So lots and lots of different stuff, and we're going to dive into the details of these in individual lessons about each different dimension. So we've got that. Now we've got this second perspective, economic, social, and cultural. These are positive rights, and I should do it in a different color. These are positive rights. If you remember what positive rights are, it means that the state has to jump in. It means that the society has to jump in at the very least. And these are things like education. These have to do with concepts of housing, for example, maybe. Or maybe things like employment. So if you remember right, these are the ones at the very end of the timeline, starting sort of in the late 1800s or so, that led to the internationalization of human rights, these concepts of security. It has a lot to do with security. Well, now we get down to the complicated one, collective rights. Sometimes these will be called your green rights because a lot of them have to do with things that are a little bit more cutting edge, a little more interesting, things like the environment your right to have a clean and, and, and healthy environment, your right to things like natural resources, and other things like participating in your cultural heritage, or even things like self-determination. So this is sort of a political way of 
identifying yourself as a group and saying we are this self-determination it has a lot to do with political empowerment and actually it's a kind of a way that I think about collective rights it has a lot to do with empowerment the hard part about collective rights is that there is no real clear agent so it's not really clear who exactly is going to be enforcing these rights and it's also really hard because there's not too many documents out there that sort of establish these collective rights there are at a small level so there are countries and smaller organizations that have established collective rights but on an international level it's very hard to get agreement on these but now I'm going to close down this video and